Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. In this video, we'll be discussing the suboccipital stretch. And throughout the video, I'll be giving some demonstrations of a couple good variations of this stretch. So this is, of course, a stretch for the suboccipital muscle group. Remember that these muscles are some tiny postural endurance muscles at the back of the cervical spine, or the upper neck, right at the base of the skull, also called the occiput. And so for some people, it's stress and anxiety. For other people, it is chronic posturing with forward head posture, where the upper cervical spine right here is actually hyperextended. The head is forward, kind of like upper cross syndrome. You might see this if you're looking over a computer screen for long periods, whether it's at work or for school, and these muscles get tight. And when they get tight, they tend to become fatigued and they become a little bit ischemic and they become a pain generator. And that pain can either be localized in the neck and or it can refer up to the head, producing what we call a cervicogenic headache. So if you find that your headache comes on a lot of times after a long time watching TV or a long time in front of a computer screen, key is a long time, and especially if that pain is in the back of the head, it may very well be a cervicogenic headache, and a lot of times these suboccipital muscles are the culprit, they're tight. If you go into a clinic and you palpate these muscles on a bunch of patients, you'll often find that they're tight or they'll often feel puffy, like they're kind of bulging out a little bit. Any one of those things is a great indication to perform a suboccipital stretch. But before we go into that and how to do it, let's review active cervical retraction, which was discussed in a previous video. Here's this person's neutral posture, and now he's performing cervical retraction. So he's using some muscles in his neck called the deep neck flexor group to perform this movement. And you'll notice he's kind of got that double chin there. So that's often how you would cue somebody to do this or cue yourself. Just make a double chin. Another thing you can also say is if a person has a cat, if you've ever put your face up near a cat, what do they kind of do? Most of them kind of do this. So it's important to understand this movement first. Because when we do a suboccipital stretch, we're going to do the same thing, except we're not using our own muscles. We're actually going to use our hand or fingers to push our neck from the front into this position, okay? So right here you see this person performing a suboccipital stretch. It can be done in standing, but generally the person is going to be seated. And instead of using the actual muscles in his neck to do this, he's using his right arm right here to actually passively move his neck into cervical retraction by putting a force on the mandible, kind of the chin, and pushing that posteriorly, okay? And then his other arm, the left one, is coming around back and his hand is at the base of the skull on the back side, the occiput. And then he's pushing forward, or if we're using anatomical terminology, giving an anterior directed force. So an anterior or forward directed force at the back of the skull and a posterior or backward directed force at the chin. And this helps stretch the suboccipitals. Let's take a look at this. And so what you're seeing here is I'm actually using my right arm to give that passive anterior force on the occiput, the back of the skull. And I'm using my left hand to actually do that passive cervical retraction. Okay? It doesn't matter which arm you use, left or right, as long as one's doing one thing, the other's doing the other. Now, this is a stretch, so we want to hold it anywhere between 30 to 60 seconds. For most people, 30 to 35 seconds is going to be sufficient, but you really need at least 30 seconds for the vast majority of stretches to really have a good effect. But beyond 60 seconds, you get diminishing returns. So there's really not any benefit of going beyond 60. So anywhere in this range for pretty much any stretch is going to be good. Now, why do I call this a general suboccipital stretch? Well, remember, because we have left and right suboccipitals. And the general form of the stretch gets both of them, left and right, to a small extent. But it doesn't get either of them to a large extent. 
So some people may get a benefit out of this form of the stretch. Some of them may not feel it at all. So for the ones that don't feel it at all, they may need a slight progression of this stretch, and that is the unilateral suboccipital stretch that I'm about to show you, where we bias either the left side to stretch or we bias either the right side to stretch. Here's the unilateral suboccipital stretch, and it's performed identical except for one big difference and it's that the neck is now side-bended to one side. In this case, I have my neck side-bended to my right, and that side-bending only needs to be about anywhere in the range of 10 to 30 degrees. I gave you about 20 degrees right here. It really depends on the individual where they feel the stretch the most. You don't need to side-bend all the way. It's just a small amount, about 20 degrees to one side, okay? An important note, though, is that the opposite side suboccipitals are going to be stretched. So, for example, in this video right here, right now, I'm actually side-bended to the right. But that means it's the left suboccipitals that are actually going to be stretched. Now, over here, I'm side-bended to the left, which means that it's my right suboccipitals that are going to be stretched. So, whatever side you're bended toward, it's the opposite suboccipitals. But other than that, it's exactly the same. You're going to side bend a little bit, about 20 degrees, and then you're going to do that passive cervical retraction with one hand like I'm doing here, and the other hand is behind the head, uh, giving that passive anterior force on the occiput. So dosage is the same. I'm going to hold each of these stretches for about 30 to 60 seconds, but I want to probably repeat this on the other side. So here I'm stretching my left suboccipitals, right, because I'm side-bended to my right. So I want to repeat that um, side-bending to the left to stretch the right suboccipitals, because generally speaking, if one side of the suboccipitals are tight, the other side is also going to be tight, okay? with very rare exceptions. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of when to use the suboccipital stretch and how to perform it. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.